there are three parts of the procedure that I utilize deeper sedation for. Uh, when we are making the pocket initially, uh, we use deeper sedation there because sometimes the dissection can be painful, particularly where if the patient is uh, has a large body habitus and we have to do a lot of dissection. And then two times where we tunnel the device, particularly the tunneling from in the sternum, we use deeper sedation at that point. The last time that we use it is when we test the defibrillation threshold. The anesthesia staff are very used to the fact, as most I think would be, that there are different levels of sedation through the case. There are times when it's lighter, there are times when it's deeper. Some hospitals allow the cardiac electrophysiologist to perform deep sedation. You can give you know, a, um, a relatively small dose of propofol or atomidate and make the patient you know, deeply sedated and then, and then test the device. Um, other hospitals don't allow um, cardiovascular specialists to have that type of uh, credentialing, and then therefore you have to have an anesthesia present. It's a lot of centers. They all have been used to, you know, one or two percent lidocaine as their local anesthetic of choice. The benefit of the, you know, lidocaine is rapid onset, you know, of action. So during implantation, you have adequate analgesia. However, the offset of action is also rapid. When they get to the post-anesthesia care unit and the short-acting local anesthetic is wearing off, then they will be in significant pain. It will delay discharge from the post-anesthesia care unit. My practice is to administer a combination of lidocaine because of its sh relatively short onset and bupivacaine because of its relatively long-acting properties where you will still get local anesthesia for up to six hours afterwards. And we mix these in a 50-50 ratio. Um, we give it pretty copiously, subcutaneously, at the three planned areas of incision, or if you do two incisions, those two. When a patient's under general anesthesia, most of the electrophysiology patients, they have a lot of morbidities that suppress the myocardium. So we don't typically give too much narcotics. Um, and the goal is also to wake them up rapidly after the procedure is completed. So using a, either a combination of a short-acting local anesthetic, which would get you a rapid onset, uh, in combination with a longer-acting local anesthetic, which will get you longer post-procedure care pain control, might be very optimal for pain control. Um, other options would be the use of Tylenol pre-procedure. Um, a lot of centers have intravenous Tylenol, or even oral you know, Tylenol would peak close to the, you know, the, the completion of SICD implantation. And I have found that the tunneling, maybe in combination with the sedation anesthesia is giving, the tunneling has not been as uncomfortable appearing as I thought it might be. I thought that might be the hardest part of the procedure, and I don't think that's the case. The uh, pocket can be uh, painful for some people if they're not sedated enough. So I'll ask the anesthesia staff to give a little bit more I'll even warn them, warn them that I'll be making the pocket in the next couple of minutes and they know to maybe get the patient a little bit deeper. If uh, they have a lot of adipose tissue, I'll give even more local once I make my incision and get it right uh, where it needs to be. The local anesthetic tends to hurt. Um, so what we do 100% of the time is make sure that the patient is deeply sedated at the time of administering local anesthesia. Um, if you are using um, a general anesthetic, you must still use local anesthesia um, because that pain of the incision will be felt once the general anesthetic is worn off. Postoperative pain control is very important. Patients that are in pain in the post anesthesia care area, they do stay there for a longer period of time. So it would impact discharging patients. And the key message is, is that postoperative pain management begins preoperatively. Um, the first uh, is a assessment of, is this patient extremely pain sensitive? If they are, then you're going to want to opt for uh, a deeper, more intensive sedation. My tips for most patients that we implant with SICD is begin uh, the, the, the pain management strategy preoperatively. I'm a big fan of giving intravenous acetaminophen preoperatively. Uh, typically, we give a gram intravenously right before skin incision. Frequently, we do pre-medicate patients with, uh, you know, with uh, Tylenol and, and occasionally with Neurontin 
I think the biggest changes I have made that I think make a difference would be uh, using Neurontin sort of out of the gate uh, when they're in the uh, post-operative time frame. So we give uh, 300 milligrams. This is not a very aggressive dose at all. We give 300 milligrams uh, orally, and then we'll give 100 milligrams on a schedule. They can use narcotics as needed on top of that. I think that post-operative pain is a function of uh, localized discomfort, primarily in the axillary pocket area. And to minimize that, uh, the um, use of local anesthetics, both that um, provide short and long-term pain control is a, a, a very important step. Uh, the use of uh, liposomal uh, bupivacaine is, a, is one um, method of pain control in the post-operative setting that we don't often consider for standard ICD. Um, I think that uh, uh, being very um, focused on uh, hemostasis and preventing uh, bleeding in that axillary pocket area and uh, the resultant hematoma that might come if uh, good hemostasis is not achieved, very important also at preventing postoperative pain. We use a large um, elastic bandage around the body. And um, so you wrap it and it puts pressure as if imitating what you would do with your hands uh, for direct manual pressure. I think just the lack of shifting and the lack of movement, and then of course the, the potential benefit of not getting a hematoma afterwards has also benefited these patients. So one of my recommendations is utilizing liposomal bupivacaine, um, also known by its trade name as Exparil. Um, liposomal bupivacaine is a, um, a local anesthetic that lasts about 72 hours. Um, it, um, it comes in, I think, in a 68 milliliter vial and can be diluted up to about 150 mLs to 200 mLs. can be injected in all of the incision sites. And we've been able to utilize this with such effectiveness that many of our patients can go home the same day of implant because uh, their pain control is so well managed. I'm a big fan of using a surgical headlamp. Um, and that actually impacts pain control also because it helps you visualize what you're doing much better, minimizes the chance of having any trauma to any muscular structure. And if you do have bleeding, um, you're able to address it with a much more precise technique um, of hemostasis rather than perhaps applying electrocautery over a wide area 